ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Effort is a Choice show. So, why have I re- decided to record the show? I figured, uh, first and foremost, one day we're all not going to be here anymore, and I wanted to leave some sort of record or accountability on some of the viewpoints I've been talking about for years, since I was 12 years old, 13, that have... I've been lucky enough to stumble across other people who are way more experienced at life than me and when they elaborate on them things and how they make a difference in your life it's like holy crap putting the pieces together on what you feel and what you see and I haven't had a whole lot of uh, positive role models in my life up until you know I stumbled across the upon this world of personal development and uh And then it's funny how you see how many other people there are who come from the dirt, what their stories are, and how, you know, they never decided to take no for an answer as far as what life offered them. And they got to where they're at, and then you realize those things in the people that I've been accustomed to being around my entire life who always have it hard. It's always someone else's fault. Someone didn't give them something. Someone didn't do something for them. Never while actual taking the ability to say, I fucked up i could have did better and i will try harder next time and uh simple little things like that for myself my entire life have been the only things that have made me any bit better of a person anytime that i've became a piece of shit for whatever that was the decisions i were making the bad choices the people i was hanging around anything that never truly brought fulfillment always made me uncomfortable and I seem to self-sacrifice and suffer more because you do things that you know don't move you forward not everyone is aware so disclaimer this show is going to be a lot like herding cats it's going to be all over the place maybe I'll think something a lot faster than I do say it sometimes might not elaborate on the whole thing If I ever don't finish something that you feel is something that needs to be talked about or examined more, man, reach out to me. Hit me up. I'm an open book. I'm pretty attainable to get a hold of. Uh, Yeah, I got some of these things wrote out of some of these feelings. You know, a lot of these papers are over a year old. I'm going to try to breeze through some of these and uh, also get to current events so that I can start relating to other people in their life at the moment because that's what it's all about is what are you doing today? fuck yesterday and what are you going to do to become the person that you want to be it's that simple and uh you know i did 75 hard i did some training with 307 project uh those that program and those people are people devoted to helping others complete themselves that's that's the 37 thing and then 75 hard is a program for people who don't even realize what they're capable of who really don't think that they can get up at, you know, 5 a.m. and stay up till midnight and do it seven days a week. And it's just, oh my God, it's so hard. No, it's not that hard. It's a capability that humanity has forgotten because of how complacent the powers that be have made you so that you are easily, you know, non-defiant. You are easily at the whelm and mercy of life because you haven't reaped from it what you want so uh again the show's like forrest gump's mom said a box of chocolates was like so uh you just never know what you're gonna get so evolution of the standard this is something again i don't want to be an echo of my influences i don't want to be a regurgitating vomit of all of the other stuff that you can hear somewhere else so I'm going to try to to take the things that I've learned. I'm not reinventing the wheel on this. I'm not coming up with, oh my God, it's a new concept. This is shit that's probably been around for, for thousands of years. This is, uh, you know, this was in meditations. This is Marcus Aurelius. This is everything that every good human being that's ever sought actual peace in their heart has been after. And it's been changed and changed and changed. And then, you know, related to... I call it the New Testament or, you know, the the new standard of how you have to realize the way that you find fulfillment within yourself. And there's a lot of other people 
who do nothing but preach that. I want to be able to relate to you, uh, the construction worker who might be 100 pounds overweight, who does clock in and out every day to feed your family, but you don't feel happy. And all the things you do, watching the football games and hoo hollering for some dudes you ain't never met, uh, it's not making you feel any better. And, you know, fishing on the weekends and running away from all them things aren't making you feel any better. So this is something I wrote on, uh, what was this, like June 2nd of last year. So it's been hard to download all of the progress that me and my wife have made during the last few months. The struggles at the very beginning to noticing how something so small can become an overwhelming part of your day because you decided that that was going to be the thing that led you to not making the rest of the decisions that you were in control of. That thought in itself, when communicated between a household, between two loving members of a family, creates an overwhelming amount of pressure to holding yourself to what you want and realizing what it takes is an incredible amount of effort that you have never put into anything else that you've ever done in your entire life. No matter how hard you thought you were working, no matter how bad you thought you wanted something, realizing that you've put energy into these other places or these other things as part of the day trying to either pretend to be busy or you know maybe it's a hobby maybe it's something you did for fun we're not necessarily ever ever going to bring you any type of fulfillment so how do you how do you change this immediately we said and you're not in possession of any of the physical or mental things you've ever wanted because of your own lack of understanding love nature and your own mind and the way that God designed this planet to act and react. The way emotions and feelings were created by a creator to have a purpose. It's all mathematical. You do this and you get that. You suffer this and you receive that. But how do you step up to something? How do you say, today I'm going to be that person? You can't go out and buy something you can't afford. You don't want to pretend. You don't want to inflate which means to puff up like a blowfish. It's kind of like I don't want to inflate any of the things that I've done to this point because I don't believe they're great things. I believe I'm making an effort to be something different. It's funny the language you use. Inflate means to pretend, to be full of air, to puff up to something that's not there. How can you not inflate yourself but become solid yourself? You can put in more hours at your job. You can clean up that, that messy shit in that corner of the garage that's been sitting there. You can roll that old dusty axle that's been collecting dust that you said you're going to restore in 2003 and actually take it to the fucking junkyard because that's what it's worth. You know, you can find peace and happiness in your soul by cutting ties with the dead things that weren't going to make you happy anyway and putting action into something better. No, nothing new is going to grow if you don't rip the dirt and the weeds up that are already there. You can't expect to ever pick any of these things up that I'm going to say or rant or talk about forever without deciding that a certain part of you or a piece of you or a habit of yours is going to die. Not only is it going to die, but it's going to fight really, really hard to stay part of your life and you're going to have to kill that motherfucker. And being uncomfortable every day is not something that you're ever going to enjoy. But what you real, will realize after a short time of putting yourself in a place of uncomfortableness on purpose is that you have been so accustomed to a misery loves company feeling that you've controlled your entire life. At least it's that way for us. The misery loves company feeling of your family being pieces of shit and making bad decisions at every turn. The feeling of no matter what you do or what you believe or what you think, the, uh, the people around you are going to do some of the things that you can't comprehend, that you don't feel that are right, and it's going to make them worse people for it. That's a misery loves company feeling. If you, were ever, if you were raised in that, in a shitty environment, and you got all these reasons for all these things that could have happened, 
be in control of it. Don't let the ball drop. Don't wait to break down and something bad happen. Put yourself, if you're going to have a hard day, have more hours at work. Have a hard day doing that thing you, you put off. Have a hard day putting effort into yourself. Don't have a hard day because everybody you know has had a hard day, and that's the way that they've decided to live their life. Misery does love company. That is a feeling. That is a, a habit that a lot of people are stuck with, and it's not a bad one. If you can love misery, you can have anything you ever dreamed of when you learn how to use that power to your advantage. Do the things that need attention. We have both developed a low tolerance for excuses, and we recognize that in almost all the people around us. And at the same time, it's a heavy weight on our shoulders when we realize that sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. That's the track record that you set with yourself for doing what you did last time. And then you will feel like shit when you have something to do because you don't believe in yourself to do it because you didn't finish. You, know, you, you only halfway did it last time. You didn't do it last time. That feeling will eat you alive and keep you sitting still. That's the fight. Sacrifice your everyday life and your comforts and you can create a stronger heart, a stronger soul, and a stronger version of yourself than you ever thought possible. Bam, son. So here's one I picked out that was a right around that same time that kind of relates to that message. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, elaborate on this one, and then I'm going to talk some shit for a little bit before I close it out about what I got coming up. So the 4th of July, 2022, in the middle of us trying to better ourselves in any way we can, it's a constant struggle to do the right thing. And the realization of lack of effort put in seems to be a full circle of emotions when realizing you have to do way more than you've ever done your entire life. My family came over for the 4th of July. It's almost hard to even be in the same room or communicate with them when every word and every sentence I just pick apart everything they've never done or the constant things they do on a daily basis that hinder them from ever being anything other than a problem for each other. Me and my wife both have faced a little awkward criticism because of the goals that we've set out on the last six months from the weight that we've lost, from the, the companies that we're trying to start, from the, the, the things that we're doing on our own, we keep hearing these whispers around. They must be cheating on each other. They must be on drugs. They must be doing this. When they ask, hey, what's the secret to what you're doing? And one of us responds with, well, you know, we get up at 5 a.m. to get a run in before we go to work, or we stay up till 11 or 12 or 1 o'clock at night to get a 45-minute walk-in before the day is over. They think, well, that's just way too hard. They can't understand it, and they wonder why things must be happening for us that are quote-unquote so good it's a sacrifice on a daily basis it's making ourselves so uncomfortable and truly believing it's not only providing us results but making us feel better about ourselves in every single decision we can make in our overall confidence in our actions every single day it's not easy it's been 60 days for me at this point and some of those days are the hardest days i've ever lived with my own self due to accountability for everything Accountability for every decision I've ever made that ultimately adds up to what I have now. And if you can accept that making the better decision is so much easier in the long run, you'll be able to understand why you're doing this. And to be honest, I love a little bit of this social criticism. There's something that gets me hyped up about saying fuck you to anyone who's ever doubted me to saying, no matter what mistakes I've made, you've made mistakes. No matter what you've done, I can do better. And I can at least say that I'm trying hard as I can to do the right thing every single day on a daily basis for me, my wife, my children, myself, and my future. And that is my reason for existence on this earth at this time. I have to get these things under control. I have to have the ability to ultimately help other people. That is the prize that lies at the end of the road of success.
you know, one of my, my youngest memories is remembering my dad being woke up for work every single day. He was a roofer for 30 years. He, uh, you know, that's a, it's a hard job. It's not the most educated demand of workforce in the industry. And uh, his brother having to beat on the door at dark to make sure that he got up and went was something that never really left my mind from the thought of, oh, this is what a job is. From the time I was writing my name on my first application, I made just a deal. Hey, man, no fucking one is going to wake me up to make me go to this job. No one is going to have to talk me in to paying the rent. No one is going to have to hope I come home with a paycheck. That wasn't going to be part of my future. Most of my youngest memories of him can include playing video games, taking gravity, bong hits out of the kitchen sink, folded up pieces of tinfoil on the dresser, and running from dogs or people anytime we ever attempted to go hunting or fishing anywhere. Yet most of my adult life, he just seems to be harmlessly stupid and full of bad decisions. Not quite bad enough to be considered an evil person, but not quite ever done anything good enough to be considered to have any sense of pride or success. Or to even be proud of himself. It's mostly just an example of what not to be. A continuous willingness to purposely make the worst decision possible. A strong urge to resist any type of normalcy as if white trash was a badge of honor to be proud of. That was on the same page. I figured I'd get it out. A couple bullet points at the top there. And again, I have a hard time relating a lot of my stories to people because I don't want to come off as a crybaby. None of the things that have ever happened to me in life are ever the things that would hinder from me. They're things that made me stronger. So when I have to tell it to a point of something that I think can make you better, it comes out like some bullhoo bullshit to me. I don't want to talk about, yeah, how my dad didn't show up to any of the Supercross tickets that I bought him in the last couple of years because he was fucking off geeking in the woods with his friends or how, you know, there was multiple birthdays that I would show up to in my 20s to hang out with my mother and, uh, yeah, I end up having to sit around and see if he was going to show up or not. Like, that's the silliest odd as shit that I never could quite put together in my mind but yet at a young age it never really bothered me because I realized like you know there's people you can count on and there's people you can't and life itself will always reveal them people are you there are kids I haven't talked to in eight or nine years when we talk on the phone it's like we didn't miss a beat there are friends I grew up with that no matter what our situations in life are when we conversate dude it's right where we were there are other people I could see every single day that will make you all the problem. Oh man, start a business. I'm gonna, I, I'd love to help you. You can come do this for me. You can do that for me. I'll tell you, them motherfuckers will disappear. They won't help you do nothing. Every person who, who oh, you can come cut my grass. Oh, you can come do this. Oh, you can come do that. Oh, well, you know, we got some Spanish guys and they come sometimes and they don't always call and they, and they, and they might do it every now. No, you get you, the people who are supposed to help you are general the people who talk the most shit about helping you are the last ones to generally step up to the plate when you're in danger the people who might not reach a handout a lot but have never left you you and and your belief and what you're capable of are generally the people who i see come back around that have helped me in my life it's never anyone who's ever i'm not gonna say giving me stuff but uh Anyway, I'm not going to elaborate on that. I'm getting into a herding cats type of situation, and that shit's going bow, 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 everywhere. So, uh, and I'm talking like a whole herd of different cats, not just like a herd of little cats. Like you got tigers, tom cats, bob cats, uh, a couple lions, uh, you know, maybe a fox or two in there pretending to be a cat. And yeah, thoughts get a little fucking out there. So, hopefully, you took something away from that. If anything, um, no matter where you come from, trust me, we've seen the, the craziest of the bottom of the barrel, and that doesn't have to be where you end up. It doesn't have to be where, you, where, where your mind stays. You could be live, literally surrounded in one of the worst places around you, which none of them places actually exist, by the way. Grew up in some of the worst poverty in the world, and now I'm learning like, 
you, you see these statistics and people, you know, white trash members of my family think poverty, that must mean like there's, you know, people standing on the corner and they're stabbing each other and people are, are eating food off the streets. I mean, not yet here in America, but no, poverty is the fat fucking kid playing video games whose mom gets food stamps and has six kids, but yet lives with her fucking mom and they all fuck claim unemployment and and food stamps and, and social this and get free phone like those. That's poverty. When when those people are looking on the news saying, oh, I, I wonder who these horrible people are. That's you. They're talking about you. And you are so stupid that you haven't realized it yet. I mean, people I know in my hometown who have kids who won't get married because it cancels their government assistance. And then they get mad at me when I want to say I'm feeding your fucking kids because I have a job. Yeah. We're going to get, see, again, we're getting into another episode. I'm a, I'm on a tangent now. Train of thought, fucking. <laughs> All right, guys. Go out in the world. Do something. Don't hold your breath. Don't be plastic. Do the right thing. And uh, get after it, man. Take it easy. Or hard. Either way. <laughs>